How's it going everyone? I want to have a talk about the use layout effect hook. This is one of those hooks that you kind of read through the documentation. You kind of like understand what it does and how it's used. Um, but you don't really get really many use cases of it. Honestly, I haven't really used this on a production application before, but I still wanted to kind of share with you like what it could be used for and why it's there. Okay, so the first thing I want to kind of talk about is the use layout effect is going to run before the before React kind of renders out your changes to the page. Okay, so before you actually visually see changes, use layout effect is going to run. And let me just go ahead and kind of demonstrate that. I'm gonna go ahead and put like layout here and I'll put another effect and I will just go ahead and put another one here. Notice that the dependency array for both of these is identical. They both depend on the names and hopefully you understand how this dependency array works. Basically, if this names array ever changes, it's going to recall this function, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and just put effect here. And maybe so it's like a more um, clear for you all, I'm just gonna put the actual like name of the hooks. So this one is going to run first before anything is actually like updated on the page visually. This one is gonna run after things are updated. Okay, so you might think, well, why, why do you wanna do that? Well, one good scenario is when you need to set the scroll top of a div that is scrollable, or if you need to access some type of width or computed height of DOM elements, and you wanna do something and change the layout or change how something is displayed before it is actually displayed to the user. So let's just go ahead and run this real quick. I wanna share with you how this kind of works in React land. Um, and notice that it calls use layout effect and then it calls use effects. In fact, let me turn off strict mode because I do think it makes this a little bit more difficult to kind of teach in terms of the ordering. So if I refresh the page, notice that it prints out use layout effect and then it prints out effect. It's also worth mentioning that the use layout effect is synchronous. So any code you put in here is going to block the browser. It's going to consume the thread and I believe it's going to stop anything else from like kind of running. So be careful what you put in here. Usually it's just for small things such as this example I'm gonna show you. Um, but, so let me walk you through the setup. Basically, I have an application that has an, a, a list or an array of names, and those names are asynchronously downloaded from a backend, right? So when this component mounts, we fetch the names, and then we set them on some state. So if I don't put any effects at all, let me just comment out both of these, um, and just go ahead and refresh the page you'll notice that after some time, it prints out ABC, blah, 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 right? So these are the, the data that comes from the backend. And let's say you had a business requirement where you needed to scroll to the very last entry. Like let's say you're making a text, a, a live chat, and you want the latest message to be scrolled to or automatically when the page loads to the bottom. Okay, so that is a good use case of the used layout effect. Okay, going down here, like we have a div has some overflow, it has some like hard coded width and height just to kind of explain this example. And then we map over the names and display them. But if we were to basically create an effect that listens for when the names array changes. So basically when the backend is, you know, sends back the response, we set that on state, we're gonna fire off an effect. Let me show you what happens if we have this code that basically tries to set the scroll top to the very bottom of that scroll div. Okay. Now I will say I have some like arbitrary set interval here that runs every two milliseconds and just runs a for loop of one e to the eight. And I also have my performance throttled down to six times because I can't really demonstrate this unless my computer is super slow. Well, let's just go ahead and refresh the page. I'll go ahead and click refresh and notice that it's going to show ABC and then it scrolls down to the bottom. So there's like a weird flicker and then it finally updates and it scrolls down to the bottom. So let's try to figure out why does it do that? If you understand React, when this effect fires, it's going to fire after everything has already been rendered, right? So we'll get back some type of asynchronous call. We set some state. React is going to rerun and re-render this entire component. Now, with the use effect here, again, this happens after everything has been visually displayed to the user. So after we see the initial state, the A, B, C, D, whatever, Bob, that's when this effect is going to run. So we display ABC, we run this effect, which is going to set the scroll top, and then the page is going to scroll down to the bottom automatically for us. So that's why we see that behavior where it shows ABC for a second, and then it scrolls down. So it's not the most optimal, like you want it to actually just automatically show, scroll down to the bottom when the page is, when, when the data is there, right? So what you can use is a use layout effect, and I'm gonna go ahead and comment this one 
out and uncomment the one above for the use layout effect. Same exact code, but again, this one is going to run before React actually renders and visually displays anything to the page. So if you kind of go back a step, let's just go step one, um, API request comes in. Step two, state is updated. Step three, React re-renders app. Step four, use layout effect. Layout effect is called. Step five, visual updates are applied. Okay, and I guess you can kind of call that the, the DOM commits or something. I don't know what the actual, like, I don't know what the technical term for this, but basically the visual changes are shown at this point. Now, the reason why we don't see a flash here, if I were to go back and save this, let's just go ahead and see what happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and refresh the page. And notice that we do not see a flash of ABC. It actually just shows straight down to the bottom and we have it already scrolled down to the last bob. Now this data is probably pretty bad for a example. I should have put more like alphabets, but I hope you get the point. When the page re first loads, we get the data from the back end and then we automatically scroll down to the very last Bob entry. So that is like one of the main things I could see using the use layout effect book for. I think it's really useful for that. But I think understanding like how it runs in React is kind of important to understand as well. Because if you weren't using the use layout effect, you would actually have this happen here. Use effect uh, will update scroll top. And then uh, page will visually change. So if you're using the use effect, notice that the visual changes are applied from the state, and then this use effect call is called, and then the page updates again visually. So this is why you might want to use the use layout effect if you just need to kind of modify some type of visual width or height or whatever before the app is actually displayed. That's when you want to use it. And this is kind of like the best use case I could find online. There's there's a ton of blog posts of people like explaining like counters and like some really esoteric examples that just don't make sense. But this is like a real life use case that I could see really needing to know how the use layout effect works to solve. Anyway, that's all I wanted to share with you all. Hopefully um, it kind of makes sense. Now, again, if I don't have throttling and if I don't have this weird like set interval that really slows down my, my computer setup, You'll, you won't even notice it, okay? You won't even notice that there's a quick flash. It just goes straight down to the bottom. But obviously this is a really basic example and the more data you have and the more components you have on the page, the slower it takes React to re-render everything. So it's kind of one of those things like when you actually see slowdowns and you see this weird flicker, that's when you might want to use this hook. But like I said, in a production app, I don't think I've even used this once because we just don't care about it flickering or if we don't care about it having a delayed scroll. Users probably don't care either, but hopefully that taught you something. If you enjoyed watching this, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, bell icon, and also feel free to join my Discord if you want to talk to me directly or just ask questions if you're stuck on any type of React programming question. All right, have a good day. Happy coding.